Manners maketh man. The Kingsman movies aren't exactly trying to make themselves 100% scientifically accurate, and they take liberties with the laws of nature as any good action movie should. Anything from the physics of walking on blades to a man wearing a robotic arm so powerful it should break his ribs every time he swings it, to robotic dogs so advanced that their creator could probably just market them to get rich instead of going through all the trouble of being a drug lord. But the one thing that did bother me, because it didn't make sense even within the scientific framework that the movie establishes, is the use of Alpha Gel in the second film, Kingsman, The Golden Circle. Specifically, its ability to repair the damage done to Harry's brain, but not his eye. First, let's take a look at the science behind what the Alpha Gel is accomplishing here. Neurogenesis. Neurogenesis is the production of new neurons. Once we reach adulthood, our bodies have a very limited capacity for neurogenesis, especially within the brain. For the most part, our brains are stuck with the neurons we've got, though we are able to change their wiring, causing neurons to fire together or severing connections so that when one fires, others around it don't. There are a few areas where neurogenesis is still occurring, such as the hippocampus, an area of the brain responsible for forming new memories. Since memories take up a lot of space, we need new neurons to help encode them, rather than using the ones we've got. But that's not the norm for the brain. For most areas, if you lose neurons to tissue damage, they're gone for good. It isn't that the brain doesn't want to bring them back. We even have neuronal stem cells that would be more than happy to become new neurons to take the place of damaged ones. But there's just one problem, and it's another very important cell within the brain, the astrocyte. Astrocytes are a type of glial cell. Their job is to provide structure to the brain and aid in the movement of neurotransmitters. When most people think of the brain, they think of a network of neurons firing back and forth. But what many don't realize is that there is an entire support system underneath this network that allows it to function. Think of the brain like one of those old coal mining towns we read about. The whole reason the town exists is to mine coal, so the miners are like the neurons. But they need food and medicine and clothes and streets and security and places to put their money, so the coal company brings in grocers and doctors and shopkeepers and road workers and police and bankers, and the next thing you know, you have a whole thriving town full of people who aren't miners but who support the miners with their work by providing infrastructure. That's what glial cells are like. Astrocytes, oligodendrocytes, ependymal cells, and microglia support neurons by providing the literal structure to the brain. And one of the jobs of astrocytes is to produce scar tissue. Gaping holes in our body's tissues are never a good idea. Fluid can build up in them, the structure of the cells around the hole can collapse, it's generally a good idea to fill in any gaps in our brain as soon as possible, and that's what astrocytes do. They fill in any damaged areas before new neurons are able to form there, creating a permanent scar and ensuring the brain will never fully be able to function the same way again. In Kingsman The Golden Circle, the alpha gel is described as protecting the brain's tissue. We can also assume that it stops the process of astrocytes filling in the damaged area, leaving everything in a kind of stasis for the time being, and keeping everything in a static state is important for protecting the brain from an even bigger problem than astrocytes making scar tissue, cascading neuronal death. Have you ever wondered why we can die from the slightest brain injury? Why is it that you can sustain an injury on one side of the brain and the whole thing shuts down? If you get shot in the lung, your lung is going to continue trying to breathe. Even as it fills with blood, it's going to give it the old college try and maybe keep you alive long enough to seek medical help. But get shot in the head and it's game over. Right then, right there. But why? Cascading neuronal death is the answer. Or excitotoxic neurodegeneration, as scientists call it. Your brain cells have a curious reaction to blood loss. They begin releasing the excitatory neurotransmitter, glutamate, which is a very important chemical for brain function and is also, unfortunately, kind of toxic in high quantities. 
And for some reason, when cells sense a lot of glutamate, their reaction is to release more of the stuff. This creates a cascading effect of brain cells releasing a toxic chemical that makes them want to release even more of it. There are a couple of other things that contribute to excitotoxic neurodegeneration. Laminin, a chemical that surrounds neurons, can break down into a toxic substance when exposed to TPA, a chemical that is used to combat blood clots, making treating strokes particularly tricky. Nitric oxide, an important chemical messenger, can cause cells to commit suicide and, guess what? It's often released in response to excessive glutamate receptor activation. And finally, those astrocytes from earlier sometimes like to mark damaged tissue for demolition by microglia, your brain's immune system. But sometimes they go a little overboard and they just mark all sorts of tissue for destruction, damaged or not. Basically, your neurons are just surrounded by things ready to kill them if the slightest imbalance occurs. But before you go and declare this the stupidest system nature has ever come up with, remember that you bathe every day in a substance that would kill you if you put your face in it for more than a few minutes. You power your appliances and light your homes with an energy that could fry you in a second and is often separated from you by a couple millimeters of rubber. And many of you heat your homes with machines that can produce an odorless gas that kills you while making you believe you're just falling asleep. Death is all around us. It's the human condition. And it's the condition of our neurons as well. So the Alpha Gel and Kingsman certainly has to account for all of that nonsense when protecting the brain's tissue. Now the movie makes it a point to say the gel only prevents further injury. Nanites are what actually repair the damaged tissue. A nanite is a theoretical type of robot operating at the scale of a nanometer, which is three orders of magnitude smaller than a micrometer. Needless to say, they're tiny. In science fiction, they are often used to accomplish seemingly magical feats while still being scientific. The idea being that at such a small scale, they can directly manipulate the molecular makeup of objects or living tissue. While real-life nanorobotic research is in its infancy, in the world of Kingsman, these machines are capable of rebuilding damaged neuronal tissue back to a relatively accurate replica of how it had been before it was damaged. Fine, I'm willing to accept all that. But if you can do that for the brain, why in the name of all that is good and empirical could you not do that for the eye as well? Why is Colin Firth wearing that eye patch? On my other channel, we examined how the brain is the most complex object in the observable universe. So if you can use nanites to rebuild a damaged brain, you should certainly be able to use them to rebuild an eye, which is vastly less complex, though complex nonetheless. We already have medical procedures capable of fixing or at least replacing most parts of the eye. The one part that medical professionals still have trouble with is the retina. And that's because the retina is part of the brain. You heard me right. Though it's difficult to see it when examining our adult bodies, the retina is embryologically part of the brain. What this means is that when we are forming in the womb, the clump of tissue that goes on to be the majority of our eyes is completely separate from the clump of tissue our retinas form from. The retina, the iris, and the optic nerve all branch out from the diencephalon, which is what the interior portion of your forebrain is called while it's still under construction. That makes the retina siblings with the thalamus, the hypothalamus, the epithal, you know, what, just all the thalamuses. So, the hardest part of the eye to repair is due to the fact that it's technically part of the brain and technology exists in the Kingsman world to overcome all the tremendous barriers to repairing brain tissue, then they should have been able to save Harry's eye. So in conclusion, your neurons are trying to kill themselves. Your glia are trying to kill your neurons. Retinas are brains. Nanites are magic robots. And if we ever developed a medical procedure capable of regrowing damaged neural tissue, we will certainly be able to regrow damaged eye tissue as well. If you like this more scientific video, please check out my other channel, The Neurologian, for more brain-based content. Like and subscribe to this channel for more pop culture. And whatever you do, thanks for watching.